Welcome to the virtual lunch. Today is Monday, October 31st, and this is virtual lunch number 671. Our guest today is Charlie Connor, the co founder and CEO of Heretic. And this is part of our series on custom development for legal with Ensurio. Charlie, I'm super excited. So many things have happened uh, since we last sat down yeah. at Relativity Fest a few years ago, I think. Oh, it has to, had to have been a few years ago. So tell us about your background and the genesis of Heretic. My background is I've always weirdly wanted to get into business. My dad was in business, so it's always been kind of my desire. So it's like the weird kid who like knew what he wanted to do growing up. I got the job as on the mobile side, and it was just the coolest experience. Went from a sales engineer I was sales CEO to an engineering CEO and just really got wrapped into it and got really excited about the development cycle, the process. And I was amazed by how customer focused the company was and less about the revenue and EBITDA. Um, I just really enjoyed it. And when I asked people a lot about it, they said it was product management was where that was. But it was a smaller team, and with a smaller team, it kind of like didn't have as much upward mobility. When Andrew did his onboarding, though, he would tell us, like, give me two years. And ironically, Mike Gampson was an angel investor in Chicago, too. So this is like before that, I knew he was going to come there. And he gave a similar speech about at LinkedIn, everybody has this two-year window, and his job is to maximize that window. So when I hit two years, I, I wanted to tr be in the war room. I wanted to make decisions. <laughs> And I left the company to join other engineers that I knew. And it was a two-sided marketplace. And it was right after Kick Here got the iconic money. And I joined a really bad startup. So it was a company called Booked Out. But it was a blessing in disguise. I got all the positives to the negatives. And I really had to learn, you know, how to, how to be scrappy, work with teams, like build, rebuild the groups. And we got bought. And during that process, we had to go through diligence. And I was like, man, this is really tough, like trying to run your business, sell the business at the same time. Our sales numbers hurts. We had 30,000 1099 um, like freelancers on our platform. And we had to find all of them that had $600 in revenue. And we're like, how are we going to do this? So I said to my buddies, I'm like, why don't we get relativity? And they're like, dude, we can't afford that. <laughs> and so that diligence process was just really humbling. It got to the point where referrals became part of the diligence process. And they asked Andrew about us. And he's like, what do you think? And I was like, man, I didn't know contracts and diligence was so hard. Why don't more people do that in relativity? And he got this like weird look in his eye. He's like, let's go grab a beer. And it kind of took off from there where we, a couple of us were XK Curians. And Rel One was a big focus. So that gave us a chance to do it. Mom opened up her own like designer store and there was just books and pages of like couches she could order or rugs and distributors and cards and like ways that you can negotiate partial containers. And it was just pages of text. And I just remember looking at Relativity, just learning, but seeing how they could, you know, remove, you know, email signatures or headers or like, you know, noise. And it, it made, to me, it wasn't like AI. It was just like great software that was possible. It just felt like that there was a more common need that didn't require litigation to really help understand what was in the intent of these documents. We felt like we had an idea. And so you would hear stories about Andrew and Jay Lieb and those guys sitting in the lobby at Legal Tech New York and, and bugging people. And so we're like, why not? And so we got a hotel room for the three of us. It was like a hundred bucks down the street and just sat in the lobby and we would see somebody we knew or we would see somebody that was, <laughs> was looking like they had a minute to talk to us. But we, we kept hearing that's interesting. We kept hearing like, I would like that. And for an idea to get some really good feedback it was exciting for us. So we just had slides that we animated to make it look like something. The big meeting was like with ropes and gray in the lobby. The elevators were broken. It was like total chaos, but they were just like, okay, we'll buy it. And we didn't even have anything. And we're like, okay, wait, this is, there's something here. And it was just a very popular topic too. So we got really lucky. Like there was people throwing out blockchain and everything else, but we just knew the brass tacks of review, you know, and simplified understanding of the document would be enough. Like we didn't have to reinvent, you know, an artificial neural science system. Like we just really felt like what 
relativity did well at review, we could replicate for the contracts piece uh, you know, of the document. We started coding, um, we built some small ways to like highlight text to identify a section. And then two things that happened that were really opportunistic, there was the machine learning summit in Chicago. And then um, we got asked to go to Fest London. And so we got forced to present or build our presentation and our pitch. Those two opportunities gave us one an investor community to pitch to. And then two days later, Fest London, that doesn't litigate as much, was the perfect place to go to. So like being in there with a really heavy e-disclosure community that wants more than just litigation was great. But those two windows gave us a chance to introduce ourselves to investment community, you know, as well as a group that doesn't need as much as the U.S. did from a litigation standpoint. So it gave us our, one of our first clients is PwC UK, and then as well as our first investors that we got later. Relativity uh, in Serial was my dev team. And so I got to work with him and we worked on uh, what was called fact manager, case manager, binders. And it's awesome to meet somebody who cares so much about their business and is such a great person. And I think the way he takes care of his team. So that was a competitive advantage, knowing that we knew an offshore team that we could augment that new relativity. And so after talking to Andrew Wan was like my second call. I was like, hey, do you guys have enough resources? And so it helped because I could not only partner with him, but we could do things like mutually invest in each other and spend that time. We set up ways to have our teams visit each other's offices in Bogota and Chicago. So it was um, a, a friendship, but also a really respected business partner that we both saw a lot of ability to leverage each other. So a lot of marketing events, like, you know, we call them kind of like study abroad programs between the groups. And so, you know, just knowing some of the types of values and drive with him, like really helped. But yeah, we, we go way back all the way to 2014. For younger people, I never look at the GPAs anymore. I look, did they work while they're at college? Like, did you do something while you're at college? Did you have to take a loan? And I know it sounds silly, but like, it's the people that like really know what it's like to have to put it out there and do things different to like not go out maybe on a Thursday night on how you know Monday night Halloween because you have to work on Tuesday and go to class like it's those people um, that I care about and then you know we would ask questions about curiosity so like what's your favorite app or what do you like to do you know while you're working what do you listen to and then we'd always ask like what's one thing you change about it because we wanted to find the people that were curious that had ideas and the people I'd always love were like wait what do you mean? Like, you know, if we could change just one thing, what would it be? They always had the best answers, but it wasn't like they came in like they were the expert. And I think trying to find those people that have had to multitask, have had to work hard to get where they are, and then are excited for people to ask their opinion is just such a unique recipe for, you know, small group. Because it's that curiosity, I think, that's really important at a startup stage. I think if people, you know, are afraid to ask questions or dig into things, it just, it kind of makes these parallel tracks where you're just one gigantic group, and not gigantic, but you're one team in the beginning and everyone's working together. The team has shrunk to be really just core product engineering. It's kind of interesting because we're their third acquisition and Text IQ, I think was a big learning lesson for them. So for us, they're a little bit more hands-off and the irony is like, we like it hands-on, but we are focused on integrating the product. I'm feeling excited about advocating more for the community and the non-litigators. And I think there's a, a big push to extend outside of litigation and I had no idea what I was getting into there. And so I think there's just a lot of lessons learned of how litigators are viewed within the firm, like what are some of the politics that do exist? Because we had to go against like the relativity of contracts, like the Kira systems where there is a huge advantage of brand name. And for folks that have just always taken orders, it's a tough concept sell. And so I'm really excited about helping them really look at themselves as a platform for practicing, you know, and understanding data and making it actionable versus just being the best e-discovery platform. So like, that's kind of like the bigger vision, but you know, really integrating the product and just making it easy for others to use is just the first and foremost goal. Charlie Connor, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this virtual uh, live. Thanks, of course, to Enserio for supporting our series on custom development for legal. I wish you just the, the very best of luck.